So my talk is in two little halves. The first is the brain in lupus, and very differently, the brain in the antiphospholipid syndrome. Starting with lupus, what is lupus? Well, the traditional view of lupus is this, the butterfly rash uh, in a young woman. And all the old textbooks have this. But actually, we see 400 lupus patients in our clinic every month, uh, lupus and antiphospholipid. And it's, it's unusual, actually, to have a butterfly rash. You get rashes everywhere, the V-neck, elbows, fingers. Um, so don't just think butterfly rash. It's easily diagnosed when you see this, but it's a minority. I'm going to show this twice, this slide, but these are all patients with lupus. And uh, uh, they have different aspects. On the left, a young woman with mainly joint pains. Uh, the woman in the wheelchair had shrinking lungs, elevation of the diaphragms, uh, shortness of breath, a sort of chronic pleuritis affecting diaphragms. And hidden in the very back is her sister with ITP, thrombocytopenic purpura, showing the genetic aspects. Um, the girl on the far right of the picture uh, was one of two patients I'm going to discuss in this meeting, was found wandering around London uh, psychotic, and she actually had discoid lupus, skin lupus, but was psychotic and responded, and she's now normal, but uh, it was neurologic disease in a, in a woman with predominantly clinically skin involvement. Um, the, the, the woman next to her on the right is very interesting because my first job as a junior registrar at the London Hospital was to contribute to our boss's textbook called Mason and Curry, textbook of rheumatology. And as the junior guy, I had to write the chapter on lupus, which I knew nothing about. And the picture of the lupus face was this woman on the right. And I wrote that lupus is a fatal disease and you shouldn't have any pregnancies. Well, this is her, she's now 40 years later, good Catholic, five children, a famous music teacher in London, uh, com completely well. We have criteria for lupus, the American courage of lupus, and I hate criteria. They limit your thinking. I think we would never have discovered the APS had it been for sticking to lupus criteria. And I, slightly tongue-in-cheek, wrote this article some years ago, but I, I believe it. These, for the very clinical clinicians in the audience, are things to look out for. Childhood migraine, I'm going to come back to that a lot. Um, going back to childhood, growing pains, often that's a common label in every country, but uh, a major feature. Many of our patients dragged to the doctor uh, at the age of 10, 12, in the teens, prolonged glandular fever comes up time and time again. And EB virus is a big suspect in some of the autoimmune diseases, but not proved satisfactorily yet. Agoraphobia. Phobia is very common in the presentation of lupus. Teenage uh, uh, phobias of various sort. Then a couple of interesting ones. Uh, allergies, food allergies. Um, drug allergies, septrin, which now is not used much, but is sulfur-containing, uh, was a disaster in lupus. Stevens-Johnson syndrome, rashes, almost invariably allergic to septrin. Um, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, that dreadful rubbish diagnosis that, that is given to so many of our lupus patients, uh, aches and pains, in other words. Um, Easier, of course, hair loss. Hairdresser discovers uh, alopecia, and it's a common feature of a flare of lupus. And the last one is one of my specials, and, and I think it's true. Lupus patients don't catch colds. You see patient after patient, they've gone down the whole family with colds, influenza, whatever. No, I'm immune, I'm okay. And one wonders if this is something to do with the overactive immune system that, that, is, that is lupus. I also believe, but we haven't got the full data, but this is, this is coming to be seen, that lupus patients may have less malignancies than other patients. So I was hinting with the history of the immunology that, that lupus has exploded in numbers. And I'll just show two graphs. This was a map I drew up in 1969 when I was a junior fellow. 
And this was centers that had published 200 patients or more. And as you can see, the west coast of America, New York, Boston, a um, lot of lupus, our own unit then in Hammersmith, uh, in, in England with, um, with, with cases. But no lupus in Africa, no lupus in China, Australia, um, and, and South America. Um, I redrew the map um, some seven years ago, and of course everywhere now is lupus, with one notable exception, and that's mainland Africa. Um, lupus is endemic, and as I was talking earlier today with colleagues, that in the Far East it has overtaken rheumatoid in some countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, it pro probably China too, as editor of the Lupus Journal. We're getting daily articles on China and the large numbers that are there, certainly here in Australia. South America, the Caribbean. And, and nobody quite knows why this discrepancy in the world map, but certainly lupus now is, is a major and common illness. What's the cause of lupus? Uh, usual story, genetic versus environment. Certainly many genetic studies, and I won't bore you with these, but there are now at least 38 susceptibility loci. The strong familial aggregation, certainly we see families with lupus. Um, if you have a parental history of lupus, there's a 14-fold increase of lupus amongst the offspring. So definitely, it's, it's, there is a strong, as there are in all autoimmune diseases, a, a genetic tendency. But what's interesting too is that there may be environmental factors. Um, we know that UV light certainly can trigger lupus, and um, th that's been well known for years. But there's increasing recognition that uh, uh, silica and other products can actually affect the immune system. And a colleague of mine, Yehuda Schoenfeld in Israel, has, d has invented a syndrome called Asia. And may you may have heard of it. It's autoimmune syndromes induced by adjuvants. And did you know, for instance, silicone breast? implants give a picture atypical lupus, atypical scleroderma. Did you know that uh, vaccines contain aluminium? And aluminium is one of the strongest adjuvants known to man. It's put in vaccines simply to make, I mean, a normal flu wouldn't give you an independent uh, resistance to flu, but so flu vaccine with aluminium does. Mm -hmm. And there's now evidence perhaps that aluminium can, amongst other things, induce it. But, but this is rather small print at the moment.